So we have our, our warm-up problem. So we started talking about integration last time. We don't know very much. So what's the problem ask? It says, suppose you have this notation where you're describing your region as sort of two intervals being combined. So this indicates x goes from a to b, y goes from c to d. In other words, it's a rectangle. So it's telling you a rectangle. And it says, well, suppose we have the integral, here's a rectangle, x goes from 0 to 1, y goes from 0 to 2, and when we integrate over that, we get 4. x goes 0 to 2, y goes 0 to 1, when we integrate over there, we get minus 2. When we go from x from 0 to 3, y from 1 to 2, we integrate, we get 3. Here, if x goes from 1 to 3, y goes 0 to 2, we get 7. And it says, suppose you know that. The question, if x goes from 2 to 3, and y goes from 0 to 1, and you integrate over that, what do you get? So the options are 2, 3, 6, 8, or 10. So do we have an answer? 10. Any other answers? You're right. It is 10. All right. So what I've done here, and it's hard to read because the marker is pretty thick, there's, I think these as four integrals, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then there's this fifth integral, which we're trying to find. And if you sketch the regions we're integrating over, so for example, integral one, you have, uh, did I turn this sideways? No, no, yes? Uh, where's one? There it is. Zero to one, zero to two. So there's one. Where does two slot in? There's two. Where does three fit in? It's up here. Four is here, and five is here. But if you look at these three combined, it forms a rectangle, x goes 0 to 3, y goes 0 to 2. These two combined forms a rectangle, x goes 0 to 3, y goes 0 to 2. So these three combined has to match those two combined. So we just say, well, what are those pieces over those rectangles? 3 minus 2 and what we don't know. Here over these two, it's 4 and 7. That leaves us with, we need it to be 10 to work out. So this is, hey, we have our pieces. Let's put them together in different ways. All right. Good. Well, thought for the day from Stuart Smalley. Now, Stuart Smalley was a character on Saturday Night Live, played by Al Franken, who served for a time in the Senate. And, but anyways, his character was a... Uh, somewhat of a self-help type person. And uh, so he had his signature phrase, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. And that was his adage that he kept telling himself. And I do think that there's something that we, we need to say this more often, which is you, you need to have your positive self-affirmations. And I know that that feels like, ah, oh, you're being too nice, you know. That's not, college is supposed to be harsh and cruel. And like, no. What, what I want to say is you need to have a positive attitude about yourself. You need to be your biggest cheerleader. And if you're negative about yourself, no one else is going to, to be there to lift you up. Start by, by telling yourself, yes, you can do things. And, you know, even if you're not perfect, people like you, and you can do better. So, so uh, if you, as you're preparing for this test, go in there with a positive mental attitude. And I think it will help. It's helped me, uh, so I think it'll help you. All right, so, good. So, what's today? Well. Uh, it helps to remember where are we, which is we're integrating, and now instead of, of course, integrating over an interval, we integrate over regions. So last time we talked about rectangles, but not every region is a rectangle. So here we might have a region which is more of a sort of an oval shape. And so now we can still ask the question, what happens if we want to find the total over this region of the function f of x, y. So we can think of this as the volume. We want just to help 
start our intuition going. Well, what's going to be our approach? And the answer is it's, it's still going to be the same. Namely, we're going to think about taking slices, add up the slices, and get our total. But there's different ways to slice. So let's suppose that we slice what we call here vertically. Now, that means I'm going to think about going up and down here in the plane. Now, in the picture, that would correspond with making a slice where I'm fixing an x value. So here's a fixed value for x. And then I take my slice up here. So there's my slice of my shape. So we say, OK, how do we think about what's going on? Well, we have extreme ends, A and B, that X goes between. But now, where does Y go between? And the answer is, it depends. Because different values for X, you'll go different bounds. So what we need is to describe what the bounds are for any value of x. So we say, all right, well, these are curves. So there's a top curve. Let's call that phi, uh, let's see, what do I call it here? We'll call it phi 2 of x. And then there's a bottom curve, phi 1 of x. And so now, what's our total? Well, our total is we're adding up from A to B the contribution of the slice. And dx. So we say, OK, well, how do we find the contribution of the slice? Well, in this slice, we do an integral. So, uh, so it's, you know, it's an integral. And where does it go from? Well, the bounds depend on the value for x. So it's phi 1 of x to phi 2 of x, f of xy, dy, dx. So that's our, our contribution. OK. Now that's if we slice vertically. Well, what if we slice horizontally? So in other words, here, you had a fixed value for x, and you moved y back and forth. Here, we can do a fixed value for y, and we can move x back and forth. <coughs> All right. Well, what does that correspond into our picture? So we have a fixed value for y, and we're having x move back and forth. So that's in our picture here. <coughs> we have, again, a slice. What's our total? Well, we're going to add up. So we have to talk about our extreme values for y. So we have a largest value for y, smallest value for y. So we're going to go from our lowest value of y to our highest value of y, the contribution of the slice when we're looking for our total, and dy. OK. Well. How do we find that? We have the same issue. We have that our bounds for x vary. So if I'm here, it's different from when I'm up here. It's different from when I'm down there. So we have to have functions. So now our functions will be x as a function of y. So I have psi 1 of y for the left, psi 2 of y for the right. And so a slice looks like an integral from psi 1 of, let's see, two, 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 psi 1 of y, I can do this right, to psi 2 of y, so low x value to high x value of f of xy dx dy. So that's the idea. Now, I'll just make a comment here. <coughs> that initially, at this stage, when we start, what variables do we see? We see x and y. After we go through this round, what are we down to? Or what do we have left? 
Yeah, so after you do one integral and evaluate, you'll get down to a variable only of x. So every integral knocks out a variable. When you get down to this final round, what are you left with? This is a number. Same thing happens here. So we start out first for x and y. After one iteration, what do we have? What's our variable? Well, I'm asking the question so we can, oh, you meant the variable y. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that again. Oh well, a variable only of y, good. And then, finally, after we go and integrate, we get a number. So every time, we're essentially reducing it down. All right, now as far as integration goes, you just do it one layer at a time, work your way through. So let's try this out. Any questions? We'll have more to say, don't worry. This is, this is not the only pictures we'll get to see today. Okay, so let's do this together. Find the integral from zero to one, integral from x squared to square root of x, two x plus two y, dy dx. All right, so we'll start. You always work from the inside out. So we're starting on the inside. What are we integrating with respect to? I, I like how somebody said dy, because he's going to say, oh, why? Well, no. okay, good. Why? Good. We're integrating with respect to y. And we know we're integrating with respect to y because notation. Notation is super duper important. dy dx means something very different from dx dy at, at this stage. So pay a lot of attention to notation. So as we integrate with respect to y, that means y is treated like a variable. What is x treated like? like a constant. So, as we integrate this inside layer, what is the integral of 2x with respect to y? 2xy. What's the integral of y, oh, sorry, of 2y with respect to y? y squared. All right, and now we're going to evaluate, and I emphasize that when I plug in here, that my bounds, these are y bounds. So, Really, when we say x squared to root x, this really means y equals x squared to y equals root x. In a similar way, I should also add, when we say 0 to 1, because this is tied to the x bounds, these are x equals 0 to x equals 1. So in evaluation here, we are going to evaluate plug in y equals x squared up to y equals square root of x. All right, so we still have the outer integral to do. But before we can do the integral, we need to do the evaluation. So we plug in. What would be x times square root of x? x to the 3 halves. So we have 2x to the 3 halves. Square root of x squared. x. Okay. Now that's plug in the top. Subtract. Plug in the bottom. x times x squared x cubed, so there's a 2x cubed, x squared squared, x to the fourth. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and just distribute the minus through, so this is 2x to the 3 halves plus x minus 2x cubed minus x to the fourth. All right. Now we're ready for our next round. All right, what's the integral of... 2 times x to the 3 halves. Well, there's a 2. Integral of x to the 3 halves. Yeah, you add 1 to the exponent, so 5 halves in front. 2 fifths. You divide or multiply by the reciprocal. Integral of x. x squared divided by 2, or x squared times a half. Integral of x cubed. x to the fourth times a fourth, right? So you have to divide by that power. Integral of x to the fourth. Yeah, one fifth x to the fifth. And we're evaluating, because we integrate with respect to x, 
we evaluate x equals 0 to x equals 1. Now, this layer doesn't really matter, but just to get into good habits, I'll go ahead and emphasize that. All right, when you plug in 0, what do you get? 0. Nice. When you plug in 1, 1 to a number is what? 1. So now we just really are just going to have the coefficient. So we get 4 fifths plus 1 half. 2 times a fourth is minus a half and minus a fifth. And subtract 0. Well, a half minus a half, cancel. 4 fifths minus a fifth, 3 fifths. All right. So doing iterated integrals with functions is very similar to what we did last time. Just work from the inside out one layer at a time. Just make sure you do your evaluation. All right. Well, uh, now this was just an integral I just wrote down. You, you can write down integrals and bounds arbitrarily. Could we figure out what our region looked like? Well, what is this telling us about x? What is this integral telling us about x? It's telling us that x goes from 0 to 1. What is it telling us about y? So yeah, it's telling us that x squared goes from y to root x. So when we talked about our bounds, we said, oh, like before we were saying we were going from a number to a number. And then we're going from a curve to a curve. So we can identify it by the bounds. So the bounds describe the region. And so we want to be able to say, oh, if I have the bounds, I have the region. Well, let's sketch some of these. y equals x squared looks like a parabola. y equals square root of x looks like square root of x. Do we know where they meet? They meet at 1. And they meet at 0. So as x goes from 0 to 1, y goes from x squared to square root of x. So our region is that shape right there. We're going to get good at that. I hope. <laughs> you hope. Because if otherwise the next test will not be very fun. And when I say the next test, the next next test. Not the one on Thursday. Okay, so notation is important. I've said this before, and we'll keep saying again. When we talk about the outer layer, we're talking about numbers. So I'm going between one number to another number. So we read that as a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b. When we talk about the inner layer, we're talking about going between curves. And so we have y going from curve phi 1 of x up to the curve phi 2 of x. And similar things can be said when we integrate dx dy. So let's uh, do some practice of sketching some regions here. We have two different integrals. So let's start by looking at the bounds. So we can, we can tie the outer layers and the inner layers. What is the outer layer telling us? Yeah, it's telling us what x does. In this case, x is going 0 to 2. What's the next layer telling us? What the y does, and where does y go from? 0 to x squared. OK, so now we can sketch. And when we sketch this, we can say, well, we should focus on the curves part. So these are our curves. So y equals 0. What does y equals 0 look like? Yeah, that's this line, y equals 0, the x-axis. How about y equals x squared? What's that look like? It's a parabola. So y equals x squared. Now, we mark where, where 0 is. Here's 0. Here's 2. And so as we go from 0 to 2, we're going from y equals 0 to y equals x squared. So we're going up and down. 
So, that, so this is a case where we're slicing essentially vertically. All right. Great. We have our region. Well, let's try this other integral. Since we were so good on, on the first one, I'm sure we can do this one. So our outer layer and our inner layer. What does our outer layer tell us? Y goes from 0 up to 4. What does the inner layer tell us? X goes from where to where? Lower bound? Root Y. Well, upper bound? Two. Right? Lower bound to upper bound. Y goes from root Y to two. Okay. So we can sketch. So we should again, let's start with the curves. So here are our curves. So let's see. X equals two. What does that look like? It's a vertical line. Okay, it looks something like this line. X equals 2. How about X equals root Y? What does X equal root Y look like? So X equals root Y. What's another way you can write that? X squared equals Y. So that looks like a parabola. X equals root Y. Now, where are we going from? We're going from 0. Y equals 0 is here. Y equals 4. Well, hmm. I'm suspicious. I suspect it might be there. It doesn't have to be, but let's check. Is this the point where they intersect? Is that where Y equals 4? Yeah. And actually, because you can check, square root of 4 is, in fact, 2. Okay, so here's 4. And as we, we are going, as y goes from 0 to 4, x moves from the lower bound, which is root y, to the upper bound, which is 2. So it's slicing in this way. So there we go. That's our picture there. All right, so that's our region. Now, do you notice anything about these regions, assuming I was a better artist? They're the same. So what, are, what can we say about these two integrals? They're the same integral. They're just expressing the integration in a different order. So if we were to integrate, then we'd get the same answer. All right. Now, a couple of things to note. It's not like rectangles. With rectangles, you just like, whoop, you flipped and life was good. It doesn't work so nicely. When you flip, it doesn't become 0 to x squared, 0 to 2. Because it's the wrong kind of thing, right? It, it has to be number to number, curve to curve. You can't have a, a function on the outside layer. So changing the order of integration is a little bit more subtle. But it's not so bad. How do we do it? All right. Most of these are just suggestions. Focus on the changing the order of integration. So how do you change the order of integration? So in other words, you have an integral. And it's integrating dx dy, or it's integrating dy dx. And you want it to do it the other way. Now you might say, why? Why do you want to do this to yourself? Well, it's actually one of the tips here. So this one on the bottom. Changing the order of integration can make some impossible integrals possible. And we like things which are possible. It's, it's easier to get points on possible things than it is to get points on impossible things. Uh, the other thing that can happen is by changing the order of integration, it can sometimes, you can collapse things. So you might have like three integrals but by changing the order of integration, you get down to one integral. Of course, the opposite can happen. Maybe I have one integral, but changing the order of integration, all of a sudden I have two or three. So, all right. 
So how do you change the order of integration? Well, you have an integral. The integral is coding the region in the bounds. So we start with the bounds. And the bounds are giving the, a description of the region in terms of inequalities. X goes from here to here. Y goes from here to here. And so we figure out, well, what are those inequalities? When we have those, we draw a picture of our region. We focus on drawing the curves. I like to indicate how you're currently slicing, just to think, OK, and now I'm going to slice in the other direction. Well, with the picture, you say, well, let's look at the curves that are the boundaries of the region. And I want to make sure I understand what they look like, both as functions of x and as functions of y, because we want to switch our perspective. Whether we say, ah, I need to think of this as a curve that's bounding maybe below, so it's a function of, of x, or maybe I'm thinking of it as a curve as, that's bounding on the right, so I need to think of it as a function of y. So it depends on our order of integration. Now, the last step, uh, you might have to break your region into parts. How do you know if you need to break your region into parts? Well, you say, well, what causes me to need a different part? And the answer is, something has changed. And so what has changed is that the bounding curve has changed. So if you ever have a, one of your bounding curves change as you slice, you say, oh, I need to, to cut my integral into different regions and handle them separately. Now, once you figure out how many parts you need for each part, you write down new bounds. And again, you think of your bounds in terms of inequalities. So your integral came from a series of inequalities. So you say, OK, let me think about the inequalities. I tend, uh, for me, I usually work from the outside in. But the key is just do it methodically. So we'll, we'll go through and do some examples. Mostly, it's just a matter of figure out how to read bounds from integrals, figure out how to get a picture, and then how do you reverse that? All right, so that's how we go about changing the order of integration. Are we ready for an example? Well, we've... Any questions? Examples will help. OK. So, change the order of integration for the integral from negative 1 to 0, integral negative root y plus 1 to positive root y plus 1 uh, of f of x, y, dx, dy. Now, there's no way we can integrate this because we don't know what the function is. So we're not going to be able to go anywhere past the order of integration. When it talks about changing the order of integration, let's think about what that means. Currently, our order of integration is dx dy. So what will our order of integration become if we changed it? <coughs> so we're going to go dy dx. So what we have is we have boxes. You know, what goes in these bounds? That's our goal. When we talk about changing the order of integration, what's in the box? So that's our plan to figure that out. Let's go through the process. What, are, what can we say about our current bounds? So, outer layer, what is this telling us? Negative 1, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 0. Move in a layer. What does this layer tell us? Negative root y plus 1, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to root y plus 1. So you'll notice these look suspiciously like our integrals, because they are, right? Negative 1 to 0, negative 1 to 0. Negative root y plus 1 to root y plus 1. Negative root y plus 1 to root y plus 1. OK, well, hmm, we've got to get some curves. So the curves are going to come from the inner layer. So we're going to look at these parts for our curves and start getting a handle on these. So Suppose I say x equals root y plus 1. That's maybe not the most obvious thing to sketch. Is there another way to write that? Yeah, x squared equals y plus 1. 
or x squared minus 1 is y. Now, what about the other side, x equals minus root y plus 1? What would you get there? Yeah, you actually end up at the same place. You know, so what's happening is it's a parabola, and we're seeing two sides. OK, so we'll, we'll draw our picture. It's y equals x squared minus 1. What is the minus 1 doing to our parabola? How does that change it? Shifts it down one. So normally a parabola would go down at the origin. Now it's going down here. OK, so this is y equals x squared minus 1. The left side can be written as x equals root y plus 1. The right side would be x equals minus root y plus 1. So we probably should mark a couple of other places. Uh, we certainly have negative 1. That's a place. What else should we be marking? Why should we mark the x-axis? That's a great answer. Why should we do it? Well, we, we, we have some information here. You know, we go up to y equals 0. So when we are integrating, we're going from negative 1 to 0. So we're slicing this way. That's our current integral. We stop there. So we stop at y equals 0, the x-axis. So that's the region. So now we're going to change our perspective. We're not going to slice horizontally. We're going to slice vertically. So let's talk about our curves, the bounding curves. What's the bounding curve on the top? y equals 0. Is it always 0? Yes, so we don't need to break anything up here. What's the bounding curve on the bottom? It's all, is it always x squared minus 1? Yes, it's always x squared minus 1. So that's good. So this tells us uh, how y behaves. What about where does x begin and, and end? Where are these locations at? 1 and negative 1. How do you figure that out? Well, you can reason it just from the picture, like at y equals 0, square root of 0 plus 1 is plus 1, negative square root of 0 plus 1 is negative 1. So, in terms of our bounds, I'll start, when I say the outside, I'll start with where x goes from. x goes from negative 1 to 1, and y goes from x squared minus 1 is the bottom, up to 0 is the top. And now we just make sure we put them in the right places. So the x bound is the outer layer, negative 1 to 1. The y bound is our inner layer, x squared minus 1 to 0. And here, at this point, we do what? What's our next thing to do? Yeah, we're done. We stop. Ah, oh, we made it. All right. We survived. Any questions? Not too bad, right? Yes? You said change it and make it an impossible integral possible. Yes. An example of what an impossible integral is. Sure. Here's a problem for you to work on. <laughs> Find the following impossible integral by first changing the order of integration. E to the y squared, hopeless. Hopeless. You can't do it. So the integral of e to the y squared dy, forget it. But could you integrate e to the y squared with respect to x? Yes. Why could you integrate e to the y squared with respect to x? Because it's a constant. It's like, I can integrate a constant. So if right now, hopeless. If we switch, a glimmer of hope emerges. Because at least we'll get one layer. Will we get two? You'll find out. An answer of e to the fourth minus one is an excellent answer. So, what's the region look like? It's a triangle. So it's this triangle. And currently, we're slicing, let's see, uh, y going from, so we're slicing up and down. 
So now we want to slice left, right. So we switch our bounds. Our y goes from 0 to 2. x goes from 0 to 2y. So there's the new integral. And we had our glimmer because we can at least do one layer. We integrate. We get constant x. Evaluate x equals 0 to 2y. So that introduces a 2y. But why does that make something impossible possible? Well, now a u du substitution. This is e to the u du from 0 to 4, which becomes e to the fourth minus 1. All right. So essentially what's happening is by changing the order of integration, we, we basically add a little bit extra that helps sort of tip the scales in favor of carrying out the antiderivative. Is it somewhat artificial? Yes. Do we like these problems? A lot. Will you see it again? Very likely. All right, so in the last few minutes, we're going to go through this problem. In the interest of time, I'm going to tell you what this region looks like very quickly. So you have two bounding curves, y equals x squared. That's not too surprising. That's a parabola. We've seen parabolas a lot. So y equals x squared. x equals 0. Well, we've seen that a lot, too. That looks like the y-axis. x equals 2 minus y squared. What does that feel like it should be? It feels like it should be a parabola because it's a parabola. Does it open to the left or to the right? To the left. And the 2 shifts it over. And so you have this shape here. So this is x equals 2 minus y squared. It intersects very conveniently at the point 1, 1. Here's the point 0, 0. Here's the point, unconveniently, uh, 0, comma, minus root 2. Because 2 minus root 2 squared is 0. And your region is below this parabola inside to the left here. So here's your region. All right. So this question says, write this as an iterate integral. So we can do it in two ways. We can do it dx dy or dy dx. If we do it quickly, we can do it in both ways. Which way do you want to do it first? dx dy. So as we're thinking of dx dy, are we slicing horizontally or vertically? Horizontal. Yeah, horizontal. Now think about your horizontal slices. There's an underlying question. Do you ever change a bounding curve? And if you do, where? At zero. OK, so you're going to have to split it into two integrals. OK, so dx dy, there will be two integrals. The function we don't know plus another integral, the function we don't know. So let's do the top one. For this region, where does y go from? That's our outer bounds. 0 to 1. Where does x go from? Well, it goes from the parabola on the left to the other parabola on the right. On this parabola, we need to have this be a function of x, because this is an x bound, so it needs to look like x equals. So y equals x squared. We wouldn't put x squared there. We would put square root of y. For the upper bound, what would we put? 2 minus y squared. For the other integral, where are we going from? Between negative root 2 and 0, we always go from low value to high value. So negative root 2, 0. Low to high. It's always low to high. As we come into our slicing horizontally, what's our low side, which is on the left? 0. x equals 0. What's our high side? 2 minus y squared. And that's... The first way we could do it. 
Any questions? I know we did that quickly. Okay. Round two, which is dy dx. So when we're thinking dy dx, we're going up down. So think about the picture. Do we ever change a bounding curve? Yes. Where does that happen? Right here. So we have these two pieces. Okay, so we're going to have to do two integrals. That's okay. We've done that before. We'll probably do it again in the future. All right. Integral number one. Where does the x value go between? Because we're doing x bounds. Zero to one. Now, our curves are y bounds, so they're y equals y equals. This curve, well, we have to think about it. It's currently x equals 2 minus y squared. We need to solve for y. That's y squared equals x minus 2. So what is y? It's plus or minus. So which one are we in? Are we in the plus or the minus here? Minus. By the way, where's the plus? It's up here. So the plus is, is where y is positive. The minus is where y is negative. Who would have thought? It's great how that works. Okay, so we go from lower bound is minus squared of x minus 2 up to our upper bound, which is x squared. The next integral, where does y go from? 1 to 2. What's our lower bound? Negative root x minus 2, our upper bound? Positive root x minus 2. And there we go. So here's an example of where you might have to have multiple integrals where you have change in bounding curves. All right, that's it for today.